Welcome to Grow and Give, a modern victory garden project from Colorado State University Extension. We're here to help you learn to grow food for yourself, your family, your neighbors, and your community. Insect pests of vegetable gardens, thrips. Thrips are fringe winged insects and we have two types that are the most problematic in our vegetable gardens. There's the western flower thrips and the onion thrips. You can see here in the picture on the left why this is called a fringe winged insect. They're very tiny, but when they're adults and their wings are unfurled, you can see that it has these hair-like filaments coming off of the wings, sort of like a fringe, and it is rather attractive but the damage that they, they do to our garden is not fun at all. When adult thrips are laying their eggs, they're inserting them into the plant itself, typically in the fruit or in the growing tips of the stem or the branches. As the larva hatches, they feed in the immediate area and it causes a distortion of the fruit and it can cause distortion of emerging leaves. So the plant will begin to look a little odd. The problem with thrips is they also can transmit a disease called tomato spotted wilt virus. For backyard gardeners, this is the most significant disease that thrips transmit or vector for us here in Colorado. That can really harm our tomato plants. And unfortunately, once you get a population of thrips, which do overwinter in our area, once you get a population that has tomato spotted wilt virus as something that is a component of the insect body now, it will continue to um, renew that disease and that disease pressure year after year after year. So trying to recognize and control thrips damage is hugely important. Important. Here are some images of what it looks like from the damage of laying their eggs, the overpositioning into the fruit or the pea pod that you see here. It causes a little blemish and it really does lead to some unattractive uh, rotting in that immediate area. The first two instars of thrips are the ones that cause the damage to the plants. They're the ones that are in the feeding stage. Albeit that they're tiny, you can recognize a lot of the damage that they do. How thrips feed is through a rasping mouth part and they'll scuff off the surface cells of the plant, leaving a silvery trail behind as you see here on the left. They also leave tarry-like uh, waste material, these fecal spots that they leave behind. Take a look at the picture on the right and you'll see this combination of the silvering damage done to the surface cells, speckled with all this fecal matter that look like small tar spots, is a significant diagnostic characteristic that suggests that we need to look a lot more closely with some magnification to try and find the thrips that are doing the damage. The last two instars aren't feeding on the plant. Rather, they've made their way down to the base of the plant or in debris right around the, um, the nearby area. They're not feeding, however, they are completing their life cycle. And once they become adults, they'll repeat the damage to the plants. We can have several generations per year and so thrips are a constant pressure on our gardens. Controlling thrips can be a little bit challenging. If the thrips do not have a disease that they're vectoring and it's simply a little bit of damage to the plants, be aware that the plants themselves can grow beyond a certain amount of damage. So it may not be worth worrying about to try and control them. However, if you're in the southern part of the state and the thrips are really attacking a lot of the chili plants that you have, you may consider putting on floating row covers. Be aware that floating row covers, which are made from a very thin fabric, can keep pollinators away from the plant itself 
and that can be problematic. Also, it does heat up a little bit underneath these floating row covers, and in the high heat of summer, that too can be a little too much for the plants. So be cautious when using floating row covers. If you're using some type of a plastic mulch, using a colored mulch like blue or a reflective mulch can be successful sometimes in confusing thrips. They can't find the plant because of the color behind it and therefore they move on. You might wanna be uh, cautious in making sure that if you're using one of these plastic mulches that you are weighing it down on all the edges of the mulch itself so wind doesn't tease it up and blow it away to Kansas. There are some horticultural oils that can be useful, especially one made from the neem tree. Neem oil, if it still contains its azadiractin, which is also a component of the neem tree, acts like a feeding disruptor and it can cause or provide very good control for insects and thrips in general. So if you can use a neem oil, it will have a two punch effect uh, if it has the azadiractin in it. The neem oil will smother the insects and the azadiractin will cause uh, feeding disruption. Otherwise, you could find and use a product called spinosad. Spinosad is a product that's made from the fermented waste material of soil microorganisms. This is also something that's found on the organic register and it can be useful in trying to suppress thrips. Grow food, give locally, support your community. Contact your local CSU Extension office 